Okay, um, um, so I just wanted to add on that, like, I'm not gonna try to, like, toot my horn or anything. Uh, last year? Yeah, it was last year. Um, I did that big, uh, Lion King review, and immediately it got blocked worldwide from Disney, and the same thing happened. I filed fair use, and after, like, two or three days, the claim was taken off. Yeah, it, it it's surprising well, that they've actually, like, moved to a system where you can justify yourself as fair use, and you actually get a response. Well, it's like, because, so um, it, doing it doesn't really do anything, it's only temporary, but here's the thing, if you dispute the claim, then the onus is now on them to actually, like, decide if they want to sue you, and they're not going to waste time and money to sue you over 10 to 15 oh, yeah, seconds of audio. I don't think they're going to try to sue me, but at the same time, it feels nice that, like, <laughs> that I've actually gotten to file a dispute with you know, the company, and then they're just like, okay, fine, whatever, we don't care. Fine, we don't care is so much better than radio silence from everyone. Well, the other thing, too, is that, like, if you also file the counterclaim and they don't address it in a certain amount of time, then their claim is considered lost. Yeah, it's, uh, 30 days. Yep. Right. So it's been taking, it's been taking a it took a while, but, uh, I get to upload Batman vs. Superman stuff tomorrow again. Woo! Yay! I actually really like that. I, I rewatched that series when I was uh, editing the full video of them. Like, this is actually a pretty good series. I'm actually proud of a thing I did. Good. Oh, 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 I used to be able to do a Doodlebob voice. Rack. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Doodlebob's a great character. Like, vo Voice-wise, it's a great voice to go with. It's just fun to- it's just fun to play with that voice. Please stop. No! Our menu! <laughs> Our menu. Our menu. <laughs> God, you sound, like an, you sound like an aggressive golem saying that. You like, sound like an aggressive golem on the attack. Freddy wants us to orb hunters. It's orb hunters. It's, nice. it's golem. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Guys, it's golem having constipation. <laughs> you know what you guys, you know, you know what you guys sound like right now? What do we sound like? People trying to pull off golem. Oh wait. <laughs> oh, you're not oh, wait. wrong, but <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. I'll take. I'll take, I'll take an all slash technically the truth for five hundred dollars. I'm just gonna pull up the uh, photo of Marge. It's true, but you tech, but you didn't have to say it. I love how uh, this one day ago someone uploaded a video called "Worst Dale Earnhardt Crashes Each Year," and that's the compilation. It's just Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s <laughs> worst crash. For 20, yeah, 20 years. He's got 20 years worth of crashes of just Dale Earnhardt and turned it into a compilation video. And nice. even though it's only been up for a day, it has 12,000 views. Nice. I watched a compilation which was Clone High Season 1, but it's only JFK. And it's so good. <laughs> um, I oh, no, I, I saw one even better. I saw one even better about JFK. Uh, TikTok. It was a TikTok thing where someone was filming doing one of those, like, face scan things, says, which president are you? And the guy's sitting in his car, and it comes up to JFK, but the funny thing is, he's in a convertible with the roof down, and without <laughs> even... That yeah, without even moving, you just see the roof start coming the up. go over him. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucked, but it's also fucked. It's so fucking good. funny. <laughs> This was, I because I've been watching Clone High, one of the funniest jokes that I did not notice the first time I watched it was in the first episode when Gandhi makes finger guns to JFK. He, like, backs away, like, really afraid of the finger guns. It's so stupid, but it's so funny to me. Did you hear that Clone High is coming back? Yes! I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm glad that, you know, something is getting a second chance because you guys know about the story of when it was originally there and it got canceled for... Yeah, India. Yeah, because, oh, it's offensive to our culture. It's a joke! Grow some yeah, was, balls! Like, yeah, well, God. That's how you man children. And also, it's based in, a, in an, a realm of truth, which was Gandhi in law school was a party animal. And that's really funny. 
Yeah, no, a lot of well, there's a lot of things about Gandhi that a lot of people uh, might fi find a little bit weird. Like, I read a book that was written by some also controversial Indian spiritual guy named Osho. He, he, he goes by like his full name is a very different. Just so people later came to know him as Osho, and he did something really creepy, culty, Where, controversial bitch? in America. But um, he had comment um, he had commented that uh, not everyone in India is actually all that fond of Gandhi. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, a lot of bad shit about Gandhi. Yeah, well, I did. Well, no, here's the thing: is that like he's you have to. It's life gets better in general, but especially in the case of Gandhi, when you view him as an, a nuanced figure rather than see him as some sort of black and white figure. Yeah. Oh, he has a lot fucking of hell! Figures. No, that's literally everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he was gonna shoot behind me. Fuck. But yeah, uh, Clone High is coming back, and I'm so excited. I God, this show is so good. I rewatched re every episode, and wow, it's it's just surprising. How I also funny heard it is. that uh, Clerks is coming back, the animated series. Yes, yeah, Clerks the animated. MTV or Viacom has just decided they want to bring back everything they've ever made, which I'm fine with. <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff that they're bringing back. Also, there's been like a, I take I'm hearing this with a pinch of salt. I think they're also bringing back Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, they've talked about doing a Beavis and Butthead revival, which is. <laughs> um, <sighs> Beavis and Butthead as fathers, which I just... That's a really good concept, actually. How? It's like... If and I don't gonna, mean how... And I don't mean how... How is it a good concept? I mean, how did Beavis and Butthead ever become fathers? They also? finally <laughs> scored. Yeah, scored. Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, dumbass. Shut up, dumbass. You did score. I scored them both. <laughs> Have you guys ever been so used to, like... Magical Star Flash... I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm just gonna say, uh, Magical Star Flash said they've never seen Clone High before. There is a four-hour video on YouTube, which is every episode of Clone High. Just watch it. It's so good. Oh. Also, um, watch my so I okay. I'm oh, sorry, go on. Uh... No, what I was saying was, have you ever had a thing where it's, like, because you're so used to modern humor, that when you go back to watch stuff that people say are classics, they're just not funny. Yeah, there's some. Like, sure. I, I'm not gonna. No, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I when I see the humor that I have now, and I'm so used to like memes and stuff, and like just people can people saying jokes on the internet, and especially if you go to like the quote unquote forbidden places, like say what you will about 4chan, they have some of the best humor. It's just really dark humor, but because of that, it's kind of really good. Um. Like, it, it, it is going to make you laugh, just it's not for faint-hearted people, so as long as you acknowledge that going in, you're good. But, uh, I'm so used to that, that if I try and watch, like, Beavis and Butthead, or Caddyshack, or, like, you know, all that other stuff, I look back and I'm just like, okay, I understand why in its time this was probably funny, but it's not doing anything for me anymore. And what's sad about this is that it's hard to find good comedies nowadays, nowadays too, because it's like, what's what's kind of sad about that is that I can watch like a 10 hour, me not 10 hour, a 10 minute meme compilation and might genuinely laugh more at that than a two hour movie that's designed to make you laugh. Yeah, yeah I think it's it's based on like, th there's some reasoning that, because I've looked into this kind of stuff, where it's like the the speed of humor in on the internet has kind of made it harder to make, you know, comedy movies because... When you're watching, like, a, when you're doing a movie, you know, that's, you know, a year and a half of work before, you know, it gets shown to anybody. So all the jokes that have been done there, yeah, they've probably been told online and funnier and faster. I think this also Yeah, has... no, the... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, um... <laughs> <laughs> Which is the, like, I was going to say, the, the internet... No, the internet has basically revolutionized, like, everything to the point where, um... Um, well, hold on. Uh, okay, so, so the, no, wait, wait. It, it revolutionized. It, no, it revolutionized everything to the point where a lot of like old, let's just say, old establishment doesn't really work anymore. Like, let's be real. Like, you want comedy? Well, now anyone can be a comedian and have an audience, and you can do it yeah. for the cost of a microphone. Or, for instance, like journalism. Most independent people who just do it in their living room are impossibly better than the people that you see in the mainstream media and more accurate too and then you go to and then you go to um 
What about, uh, and what's insulting about that is that they can do it for the cost of a microphone. They don't need a $10 million or $10,000 lighting and a million dollar paycheck and all this other stuff that the other guy needs. You just need the price of a microphone and an internet connection. Um, or music. You don't need a record label anymore. You can just upload it to SoundCloud. Fuck you guys, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it, because it gave so much power to everyone, like, old. What what are the old like establishment types is like, uh, like Hollywood? It's kind of like, yeah, you can release a movie, but there's also this independent studio because now you can do amazing special effects with After Effects. So you've oh, essentially shit. we've stolen the Promethean fire. You can make an amazing Hollywood quality movie just by having a damn good editor, yeah. and you can do it in the middle of nowhere Iowa, where no, Hollywood would never even think to release or say anything. Yeah, there's. A lot of that kind of stuff, the internet is kind of... It's changed, and that's... I think that that's the problem with... I, I, I'm trying to think of a word. Good thing. Yep. <laughs> I broke. Oh, I hit no. peak, dumbass. No! You're good, boop. <laughs> yeah. Clone High's coming back, and I'm excited. Also, I love what a question oh. guy puts in. After you. No, after you. No, uh, but to play up um, the Game reasoning... Class. The, the the reasoning behind the arg, um not argument but the reasoning behind why um, online memes can be um, like some people like it more than uh, what's done in comedic films is that when it comes to comedic films they're kind of limited down to not focusing too much on jokes but there's um not a taboo but it's some kind of rule that if you're making a movie you have to tell a story and you have to try to work those jokes into it and some of it is going to be such a hit and miss that trying to sustain laughs is not going to be as much as watching a silly moment happen in a video being watched over and over and over again well another, another thing about it too is that like a meme can be relatable you can make a meme about anything but you can't make a movie about anything yeah, yeah. um and that and that's and that's kind of another problem too is or a problem for hollywood at least but the but another problem on top on top of that is that most of these yeah, most of the writing people are kind of are kind of just a circle jerk team of people who write literally every movie. So if it's not in their awareness to make a joke about something, you'll never see the joke about it, and it's harder for them to be relatable because you can only be so relatable living in an upper class condition in Hollywood. You're not gonna connect with someone who lives in the middle of Michigan. For God instance. damn it! Yeah. Oh no! Oh. Fuck. I still think that, like, and there are still st some, like, Hollywood things that still just really make me laugh. Like, um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is still incredibly funny. Um, oh, wait, I know a good show, a good, really good show about this. Um, and oddly enough, it does take place in California. Oh. Silicon Valley is the funniest yeah. show I've ever fucking seen. Silicon Valley is really fun. Um, I love Silicon Valley. I still, you know, community is still really fucking funny like uh and yeah t tv it seems has been punching has been punching up recently and even though tv is a dying medium yeah um hbo in particular has consistently knocked it out of the park um barry but like fucking barry is so damn good like uh, jesus that show has no right to be as good as it is no, like, HBO recently made the highest-rated show in the history of television on IMDb. What show? Chernobyl. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that is, that is the highest-ranked show of all time. It beat out literally every movie on IMDb, and every t every TV show on IMDb has wow. been beaten by Chernobyl. Do I have to watch it now? No, dude, you should. It's so fucking good. It is really good. You guys know I'm a hypochondriac, right? So watching people yeah. suffer oh, radiation no, poisoning. Dude, well, I need to point something out, Golden. I need to point something out to you. Yeah. Um, this is a show that me that can blow any horror movie out of the water in some cases, and it will do it with superior minimalism. It has made dust. There's a scene where they all you see is dust, and they can make it more horrifying than literally any horror movie that has come out in the past fifty years. Or, if you want to get even freakier, uh, does anyone remember the divers? I've been more- that scene was more terrifying than literally any horror movie I've ever seen. And b another thing I added to it was that that was real, and- Oh, it's so fucking good. And this is from the dude 
who made Hangover 2 and 3. And then he comes up with amazing shit like this, and it blows everyone's fucking mind. I think when you see, like, it's like, what? Dude did this movie, and then you're gonna just go and make something, like, insanely fucking good? That's weird. How did you do that? Yeah, no, he he's like, master. It's like, forgive me, I must use my... No, wait, sorry. This is It's more like, oh yeah, he's casually fighting with his left hand, and then he's like, this is to go even further beyond, and then... And then he releases Chernobyl. Yeah. But no, dude, that thing that thing got all all of us who saw it, like me, Blissey, Solar Player, Riley. We were all like obsessed with researching it, and we found there were only like three or four inaccuracies in the entire show, and like everything else in it was like scary accurate. Uh, to the point where people who lived in the former Soviet Union, some of them who were actually liquidators themselves who saw the show. Including one of the generals. Apparently one of the Soviet generals, who is still alive today, saw the show, and he says, I love who you casted for me, this is perfect. He said that on the news. He's I like, smell. they capt- I love who you um, casted to recreate my horrifying experiences. Amazing. <laughs> no, but what's even- what's even creepier, though, is that, um, a lot of the dialogue that the characters are saying- char- or that- not characters, that the people are saying, um, is shit that they actually said in real life at that exact moment from transcripts and test from court transcripts and testimonies. So even when the people in the control room are muttering, this isn't right, we did everything right, that's what that's exactly what they said word for word in that moment, just in Russian. They just translated that in English. So even panicky little shit they're saying to themselves is stuff that they actually said. To the point where people who knew these guys, like there was a comment section from someone who actually lived in uh, Pripyat, the city. And he says, I knew Tom... He's like, hey, wait, you. this is kind of freaky. Um, he, because he remembered three days before the incident, um, him and Toptonov... Um, him and Toptonov uh, were... He, like, helped him install a fridge that he just got. Whoa! And what he said, the hell? And then he said, dude, you matched his speech pattern, like, way too perfectly. This is kind of scary. Like, the actors, I mean, like, the way that they cast him. And the, the guy, he, like, the um, people in East Europe, they can tell that these people are British, because they don't look Slavic. Um, oh, but they're God like, damn. dude, these, they look like, it's almost freaky how they look like British versions of literally everyone, to the point where there's, like, striking resemblances in most of the photographs that you'll see. Because even when they went to, oh, um, Ignat, uh, Ignatenkov's mother, say... This is who we got oh, to play your shit. son. God um, damn it. People have noticed that he looks like scarily like the person he's playing. Hmm. Like even his own mother well, his mother did mention one minor difference that his face isn't as round. But um Uh but beyond that, he looked a scary degree like Ignat Tankov. Ignat Tankov, by the way, there were two of them. There's, damn it, I didn't pause in uh, time! Uh, I love the duality of this stream going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>